True Terrain is an interesting add-on that comes in the form of different terrain creation tools inside Blender. I think whether you are a game developer, a VFX artist, or a filmmaker, you can take advantage of this tool. It allows you to create hyper-realistic terrains as efficiently as possible. Now with the version 4.1 out there and its exciting new bug fixes and features, I think this is a great time to revisit the best terrain creation tool inside Blender. What is interesting about True Terrain is that it gives you a high level of control with the UI that take you from creating terrain meshes all the way to the final render. The add-on is divided into three sections. You have the shader section, an asset creation section, and a water section. The process is non-destructive, so you can jump between each step back and forth without losing any changes or applying anything permanently, and you can modify the settings anytime you want. The shader section. After you create a mesh, you can add materials. Go ahead and click add material button on the top of the window. You can choose your ground materials because you have a plethora of high resolution textures, biomes, and procedural maps to apply to your terrain. There is a total of 165 materials available for the ultimate version, 45 materials for the light version, and 86 for the pro version across six biome types. And these are desert, forest, grassland, tundra, tropical, and aquatic. You have full control over the shader, color variance, mapping, advanced mapping, anti-tile, and much more. Everything is exposed within the panel of the add-on. However, if you want to dive in deeper, you can go ahead in the shader editor to see the full material note setup. Below that, you have the subdivision section, here you have to subdivide your mesh, and you can apply adaptive subdivision, however, this will compromise your ability to apply scale later, because this will duplicate your mesh and link them together. One that will show only the scattered objects, and the other that will show the base object. The asset section. In the asset section, you can add different assets to your scenes, such as grass, rocks, and trees, with a lot of control over each scattered asset. All the added assets will be laid out in a layered fashion, so you can stock as many assets as you want in the scene and you can control them individually. For example, you can take the visibility of each individual asset on and off. With rocks and trees, you can choose the mesh quality level, and changing the mesh quality level will load a heavier mesh to your scene instead of a low poly one. Although, I don't see the point of heavy meshes if you are scattering thousands of rocks across the terrain. I did some tests and I can tell you the difference between the low poly and high poly models won't be necessarily noticeable. This is the case unless you do close-up shots. The way you add grass to your scene is the exact same way you add trees and rocks. Just open the assets drop down menu, choose the thumbnail of the asset you wish to add to the scene and click add grass, add rocks or add trees buttons. You can choose between two options, scatter or place. Scatter will automatically scatter objects on your terrain, and on the other hand, Place will let you manually place each asset manually, of course. After adding the assets, you can see them added in the Active Scatter System Outliner. You can change their viewport and render visibility, and you can adjust a system by highlighting it and adjusting the settings down below. The settings are divided into three tabs, Scatter, Modifier, and Shader. The Scatter tab will allow you to control the particle system of the scattered assets, whether it be grass, rocks, or trees. You can control the density, distribution, offset, scale, and rotation. In the Modifier tab, you can assign modifiers that will affect your assets. For example, the Level of Detail modifier will allow you to set a level of detail operation on any asset in the scene, or a wind modifier to animate the grass or a height mask which limits assets between two heights, and anything outside of that will be deleted. In addition to the slot mask, which will limit the assets faces at a certain slope, etc. The developer did a great job expanding the customizability of the scattered assets, and the modifiers are great and easy to use. On the shader tab of the assets panel, you have the option to change the look of assets. The specific settings will change for each asset, and you will be able to adjust the wetness and control the color correction of the assets in addition to displacement and normal maps, and some assets have shader values for subdivision scattering, snow, AO-based dirt, etc. Water Selection True Terrain also allows you to easily add realistic water to your scene. To add water to your project, select one of the water types the add-on offers, and then click the Add Water button. You have four options to choose from, ice, lake or river, ocean, and tropical or lagoons. 
You can also further customize the water by adjusting the settings down below in the water settings section. Here you can control the shader, phone types, light value, volume operation and so much more. The out of the box water presets look great, but you might want to play around with different settings like ripple and displacement intensity to achieve results that you are happy with. Overall there is so much you can do with True Terrain because we have not gotten into all functionalities. But we urge you to check out the add-ons page to know about the full details and capabilities of this great add-on. If you are interested, you can find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.